On today's Sound Iron Session, we're going to be looking at an epic Marvel action style cue, so stick around. Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Greg Peters here from Sound Iron, and in today's Sound Iron session, we're going to be looking at a demo that I wrote for Hyperion Brass Micro, which is our new chamber brass ensemble library built for the free contact player. I'm a huge fan of the Marvel movies with their huge bombastic soundtracks from composers like Alan Silvestri, Brian Tyler, and many others. This cue was heavily inspired by soundtracks like Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. I composed this cue in a little bit of a different fashion as I wanted it to have that sound as if it was scored to pictures, so it has a lot of unexpected twists and turns. So before we dive in and start talking about the different libraries I used, how I mixed it, and that sort of thing, let's go ahead and have a listen to the track. So since this was a demo for Hyperion Brass Micro, I thought it'd be fun to see how big of a sound I can get using predominantly micro libraries. The libraries I used in this queue are mainly from our micro collections, including Hyperion Strings Micro, Brass Micro, Olympus Micro, Ape Micro, as well as Electric Zaz, Requiem Light Choir, Jewel Bandolero, and Symphony Series Woodwinds. So to get things rolling, I started off with a simple piano sketch, and for this I used our Emotional Piano. The cue starts with a dark and sinister tone and utilizes the swells from Hyperion Brass Micro. I wanted it to start off with a feeling of impending doom as if the villain was making their way in and getting ready to stir up some trouble. I really love the swells and the expressions as they really add a lot of realism to the track. I wanted this section to have a lot of weight, so I also layered it up with some bass winds from Symphony Series Woodwinds, as well as an 808 and some low booms. So let's go ahead and layer in that 808. and then the slow boom. And then we also have some percussion. We also have this Divisimens Legato patch from Olympus Choir Micro, and this really helps give it a more ominous feeling. And what I really love about this patch is the way it's set up that you can use the mod wheel to go between different vowel types. So we have this O and then A. Ah. And then with 8 micro, I'm pretty much just using it as a way to add more tension with some low drum hits. And then on top of this section, I also have some strings from Hyperion Strings Micro. And this is more just in the background layering in while the brass is the main feature. The strings are there just for support and adding some other layers and that sort of thing. So the strings by themselves sound like this. So 
So we got some violin sustains, just holding single notes is more just for building tension. And then I also am using these decrescendo articulations, which are really nice just because they start off with a strong attack and then fade down and just kind of blend more into the mix. At bar 11, which I labeled the synth section, this is where the track picks up. And I utilize this arpeggiated effects preset from Jewel Bandolero, which sounds like this. And then you can also hear it starts to do a little bit of panning as the track starts to build up and more instruments start to come in. You start to hear it pan between left and right. This was the first thing that I laid down for this section and just started building everything else around it. I also used our electric Zaz library to bring in a little sonic variation. I'm a huge fan of the Doctor Strange soundtrack and I love the use of the sitars in the score. So this led me to use some other unique instruments that aren't that commonly heard in orchestral music. And then I'm also using some decapitator on here just to add a little bit of grit to it. Sounds like this without it. And then with. And then in the mix. I began to build this section with low drums and string ostinatos just to start building up the pace. To accent this, I'm also using the 30-second note staccato articulations for the tubas and tenor trombones. The horns for sandos do a great job of building intensity as we lead into the next section. I'm also adding to the epic feel with Requiem Light Choir, just playing an A minor chord on top of the drum hits. Now let's go ahead and listen to the strings just by themselves. And on that last little benonet benonet, I'm also layering it with some flute staccato, so let's go ahead and listen to that by itself. So I feel the flutes helped add another higher range to the orchestra and helped lead into the next section. So without it, sounds like this. And then with. At measure 23, which I'm calling the orchestral buildup, I wanted it to drop into a low menacing feeling as if the villain was gaining the upper hand. I have the cellos and basses playing a decrescendo with a bit of a call and response from the horns and tenor trombones. These eventually come together before the choir hits this big chord. For this section, I'm also layering Olympus Choir Micro and Requiem Light. One of my favorite aspects of Requiem Light Choir is when you go into the Marcato Ensemble patch and you set this to phrase. This helps for quick programming and also makes it sound like they're saying words really easily. Before the call and response section, we had the marcato ensemble building up along with the strings and horns while the tubas and tenor trombones and the bass is right on one note. And then we also have some percussion. 
and then this 808 and low sub boom. And then we can't forget the choir. So that big chord in the end really helped bring it into the next section before things really start building up. For the cymbals that you're hearing, I'm using the cymbal mixer patch from Apocalypse Percussion Elements. There are no cymbals in Apocalypse Percussion Micro, so I had to pull this one out. And I'm just using these on certain important accents that I want to layer up with the low drums. And then we have this little orchestral buildup that leads into this call and response section. And the choir is a really cool part. I really like how this sounds. It really uh, is very Doctor Strange inspired. And then all together. So in measure 31, which I'm calling the call and response section, utilizes some parallel harmonies. I've also heard this referred to as harmonic parallelism or harmonic planing. So what I did is I created a single melody and then I took all those notes and made them all minor chords. This section was definitely inspired by John Williams. I've heard a lot of this kind of stuff in Star Wars, so I wanted to throw a little bit of that in. So let's go ahead and listen to just the brass on this section. So this last part is really all about building momentum and then just dropping off as if the scene then ended and then faded into the next scene in the movie. If it was a movie. Let's go ahead and listen to the strings in this section. So you can hear some of the strings are playing off the brass. The brass is the main driving force of this part, so I wanted the strings to be more of a supporting role. So let's listen to the strings and the brass together. And then those decrescendo articulations really help fade it out naturally. All right, so now let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about some of the mixing that I did and some of the plugins that I used. So first let's go ahead and check out the brass. So for the brass I have this preset that I've loaded up and it's got some virtual mix bus, a little bit of air from this air plugin, and then some compression. I also have some EQ on here just kind of filtering out some of the lows, scooping out a little bit of that kind of honky low to mid area and then boosting a little bit of the highs to give the brass a little bit more shine. Without sounds like this. And then with. And then I also have some decapitator on here as well. So with our Hyperion Orchestral series, it's recorded mainly chamber size and smaller rooms, so you can really get a dry, tight sound, which is great for if you're layering with other libraries or you just want to really place it in your own sonic space. So for this, I wanted it to have a little bit more of a bigger hall feel, so I'm using the Cinematic Rooms from Liquid Sonics. With it, sounds like this. So you can hear it really helps give it a big full sound and without it sounds like this. And then with. So I really like how that sounded. And then for the strings, I'm also doing a lot of high passing. I'm high passing around 50 hertz. And then I'm also doing a lot of scooping around the lows and to the upper mids. And then I'm also brightening the highs just to give it a little bit more air. Sounds like this. Without. So it's not really too much of a night and day difference, just more of a filtering out and subtractive EQ and just boosting a little bit. And then I also have some decapitator on here as well. I really like using the decapitator on orchestral instruments. It really helps kind of give it a little bit more of an edge and kind of fills out the sound a little bit more. Let me go ahead and bypass the reverb so you can hear out what it's doing.
And then for the orchestral verb, I'm also using cinematic rooms as well with a few different tweaks into the settings. This is just more to dry it up a little bit more and have it a little bit more up front as I want the brass to sit back. I want the strings to be a little bit more up front and a little bit drier and not so uh, reverberant. And then a plugin that you've probably seen on some recent Sound Iron sessions and heard me talk about is the Shep's Parallel Particles from Waves. And I really love using this on drums. It really helps kind of give it a big, huge sound. So let's hear it without. And then with. And then to get the final sound of the mix, I'm using some plugins that you've seen me use before in the past. I'm using Golfoss. And then I'm using the Slate Virtual Mix Rack with a trimmer on here just to give me some more headroom, as well as this Virtual Mix Bus just for adding in a little bit of that analog sound. And then I got my favorite Mix Bus compressor, which is the SSL G Comp. I really love using this on the Mix Bus. I got some Virtual Tape on here, and one of the things that I did double check and one thing that you should double check too if you use this for any kind of mastering or or just loading it on tracks is to go into the settings option and check the bass alignment sometimes you could be adding a little bit more low end using this plugin so definitely go in here because you can dial that back which i did for this because i felt like it was getting a little bit too overruly and woofy so i went in here and kind of dialed that back a little bit now one thing i did do a little bit different on here is i've been experimenting with some multiband compression on my mix bus for this, I'm just using this preset just to kind of get an idea and, and start to learn this plugin a little bit more. I just threw this preset on here and it sounded pretty good. I liked how it sounded. So let's go ahead and listen to it with and without. So you can see it's a very dynamic plugin and I really like what it's doing. Let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like without. So you can see without it starts to sound a little unruly, it starts to sound a little unfocused and muffled. So with it really helped kind of bring out the things that I liked and take away some of the things that I didn't. And I think this kind of plugin works great with Golfoss as that's more of an intelligent EQ and this is kind of doing things in a little bit more of an intelligent way as well. Uh, it's not the same kind of plugin, not comparing them, but I really like what it's doing in combination. And then as my main limiter, I'm using Ozone 9. I pretty much am using this IRC1 and then the threshold is at minus three and I got the ceiling at 0.2 without sounds like this. And then with. One of the other things I want to mention in Ozone, I'm not only using it for the maximizer, I'm also using this exciter. And this has helped just bring in some harmonic frequencies and just kind of make it a little bit more exciting, I guess. And then I'm using this imager and this has helped just kind of widen out the sound a little bit more. So I'm not only using this for the maximizer, I also have a few other things going on. So to wrap things up, I'm using Flatline from Submission Audio and this is a really awesome mastering limiter. And I really like the simplicity of it, you just have threshold, shape, and output. For the shape, it's really cool because you can shape how hard you're going into it. So if you want it to be a little bit softer, you can dial the shape back and you can see how it responds. Or if you want it super hard and just flat, you can do that too. So I have mine at around 96%. And the threshold is only at minus, almost minus four. So it's not really hitting it too hard as Ozone's doing the majority of the work. So this track was a lot of fun to write and it was a really fun experiment to see how big of an epic sound you can get using our micro libraries. If you want to learn more about Hyperion Brass Micro as well as any of the other micro libraries and any of the other libraries that I used in this track, make sure to go to soundiron.com. I want to thank you all so much for tuning into the Sound Iron session. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this and stay up to date on all future walkthroughs, product tutorials, composing videos, interviews, and much more. So until next time, thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.